The Civil War holds many stories of acts of daring and bravery. During the winter of 1863, the notorious Confederate Colonel John Singleton Mosby repeatedly raided the Union outposts in Northern Virginia. On one such raid, Mosby would make off with more than just horses and weapons. Our story takes place in the Gunnel House, here at Fairfax Courthouse, Virginia. Throughout the winter of 1863, Confederate Cavalry Officer John Singleton Mosby and his band of guerrillas repeatedly raided outposts in Northern Virginia, taking many Union prisoners, horses, and weapons. In March, Mosby, a 29-year-old lawyer turned guerrilla fighter, planned one of his most daring raids to date. Earlier that winter, he had been approached by James Ames, a Union deserter from the 5th New York Cavalry, whom offered to help. Ames possessed a great deal of knowledge about the Union positions. After passing several tests of loyalty, he had Mosby's complete confidence. I now determined to execute my scheme to capture both General Stoughton and Colonel Wyndham at their headquarters. The safety of the Enterprise lay in its novelty. Nothing of the kind had been done before. John Singleton Mosby. The raid was personally motivated by Mosby's need to take satisfaction for an insult delivered by Union Cavalry Commander Lieutenant Sir Percy Wyndham. Wyndham was appalled by Mosby's use of guerrilla warfare and publicly denounced him as a common horse thief. The offended Mosby had his own view of Wyndham. Wyndham was familiar with the old rules of the schools, but he soon learned that they were out of date, and his experience in war had not taught him how to counteract the forays and surprises that kept his men in the saddle all the time. Mosby further mocked Wyndham by sending word through a citizen that the men of his regiment were not worth capturing and he must give them six shooters. We used neither carbines nor sabers, but all my men carried a pair of Colt pistols. We did not pay for them, but the U.S. government did. On the evening of March 8th, 1863, Mosby and 29 men met at Dover in Loudoun County, about 25 miles from his objective Fairfax County Courthouse. At Centerville, where several thousand troops were posted, Mosby, with knowledge provided by Ames, was able to pass between them and Wyndham's cavalry without giving the alarm. Mosby's Confederate raiders reached the courthouse at about 2 a.m. There were a few sentinels about the town, it was so dark they could not distinguish us from Union troops. Squads were detailed to go around to the officers' quarters and to the stables for the horses. But good fortune was in Wyndham's favor, for that evening he had gone to Washington by train. The squads gathered prisoners, horses, and cut telegraph lines. Mosby then rode five or six men to the Gunnel House where General Stoughton was headquartered. Mosby knocked loudly on the door. Soon a window above opened and someone asked who was there. Mosby answered, 5th New York Cavalry with a dispatch for General Stoughton. The door opened and the staff officer, Lieutenant Prentice, was before him. Mosby took him by the nightshirt, whispered his name in his ear, and told him to take him to General Stoughton's room. Resistance was useless and he obeyed. On the bed we saw the General sleeping soundly. There was no time for ceremony, so I drew up the bedclothes, pulled up the general's shirt, and gave him a spank on his bare back and told him to get up. Stoughton thought someone was taking rude familiarity with him. He asked in an indignant tone what this all meant. Mosby told him that he was a prisoner and that he must get up quickly and dress. He asked Stoughton if he had ever heard of Mosby, and he said he had. I am Mosby, he said. Stewart's cavalry is in possession of the courthouse be quick and dress. Amazingly, Mosby accomplished his plan without firing a shot or losing one of his own men. During their escape, they crossed Bull Run at Sudley Ford and were soon on the historic battlefield at Bull Run. From the heights of Groveton, they could see that the road was clear to Centerville and that there was no pursuit. Years later, Mosby would write, I could not but feel deep pity for Stoughton when he looked back at Centerville and saw that there was no chance of his rescue. Without any fault of his own, 
Stoughton's career as a soldier was blasted. I think it's perfectly safe to say that Mosby's sediment was not shared by any man in the 2nd Brigade. After our none too short experience with him, we ought not to be blamed if we had no tears to shed for him. Never shall I forget what little regret was manifested when the announcement was made to us. Neither will I forget with what unbounded enthusiasm we welcomed his successor, General George J. Stannard. James Hartwell, 13th Vermont. When President Lincoln received news of Stoughton's capture, he responded that he did not mind so much the loss of a general, for he could make another in five minutes. But he hated to lose the horses. Charles Barr, a private with the 13th Vermont, had been detailed to guard duty at Stoughton's headquarters and was among one of the many Union prisoners. He later complained that he had been forced to ride a raw-boned, sharp-backed shack of a small mule without the benefit of a saddle for about 24 hours. However, he was one of the lucky ones. For once Mosby was safely clear of the Union cavalry, Barr, along with Frank Felt, also of the 13th Vermont, were released and allowed to walk back to the Union lines. General Stoughton would spend three months in the infamous Liberty Prison at Richmond, Virginia before being exchanged. While in prison, his commission expired and was not renewed. His military career was over. On April 20th, the 2nd Vermont Brigade would receive a new commander, Brigadier General George Garrison Stannard of Georgia, Vermont. One soldier wrote, we got another general, but not a Stoughton, he's just the opposite. You would take him for a private if he did not have any shoulder straps on. He had a reputation as a brave officer under fire and would gain the respect of the brigade, a respect that would play an important role in the months to come.